this is Travis Wayne Goodsell. All right, uh, I'm stiff and sore this morning. Uh, last night, uh, man sand. Yep, poofy hair first thing in the morning. Man sand 900 across the line. Not against me. Uh, he's I, I, uh, he was a follower. And uh, he crossed the line. He did not understand what it is that I'm doing with these videos. Yes, the church is corrupt. Yes, the church is committing crimes. Yes, the church is committing abuses. Yes, the church isn't true. Despite Salvador Guzman. I, Guzman? I remembered that name right. <coughs> Because, uh, as Jesus pointed out, by a prophet's fruits, ye shall know them. A prophet's fruits. That's what he was talking about, even though that can be applied to anybody. Uh, anybody who gets an idea, implements it, will know whether that idea was good or bad. And so, if you realize it's bad, then you've got to scrap that idea, and you've got to come up with a new idea. And it's something that the church does not practice, even though they preach it. The, uh, the fruits of the church are that they're neglecting the poor, severely neglecting the poor. It's about 0.1 percent, if not less, depending on how much uh, money they actually are making compared to what they give. So they may be making or giving upwards of 40 million, as Elder Oaks said in a Deseret News article. But if they're making over uh, multi-billions that 40 million all of a sudden is worthless the uh, widow's might uh, is an example of a woman who had nothing to give and yet she desired to give the church is not a widow and they're definitely not giving their last might <clears throat> They're the example of the rich, whom Jesus was trying to chastise. Because that widow, obviously, needs to be taken care of, now that she's given away her last might. <clears throat> so, the focus was on the Pharisees, who claimed to give who make a show of giving, who use their news agency to cover them while they uh, go down to Texas or to Florida, but then when it comes to Puerto Rico, they only do a token amount of giving, but they don't personally visit. And of course that token is never good enough. Neither was the token for Texas or the token for Florida. In a natural disaster, it takes months of support, not just a token. And if you all learned anything from the Michael Cohen hearing, just because you have one token black person, that, that still makes you a racist. Especially when you try to pull a stunt, like trying to claim you have one example, therefore you're not. That's an automatic racist card. And so an automatic neglecting the poor card is giving a token amount when more is needed. 
<clears throat> and so with Brigham Young, his fruits, murder. That's what caused me to leave. Doing church history and finding out he was responsible for many murders. He was a bloodthirsty man who used his position to have other people do that work for him. He ordered the hit on Joseph Smith. He ordered the Mormon War. He ordered the saints to go during the winter time, which murdered them. And so the blood of the prophets and the blood of the saints, as prophesied in scripture, refers to Brigham Young. And he ordered the Mountain Meadows Massacre, which the church finally said, okay, we'll at least bust the bishop. But have they removed his name from the temple records? Or temple uh, records? Even though it has to be posthumously. Of which event happened on 9-11, by the way. Brigham Young was guilty of murdering the Ute Indians. And then, of course, Brigham Young was also guilty of murdering the saints who survived and made it to this valley. With the blood atonement and the... Uh, the temple covenant with the penalty attached to kill yourself for violating the temple covenants. The first one, of course, was for women. After Brigham Young's wife, one of his wives, divorced him, he then put in the temple that women must kill themselves for violating obedience to their husband that was a revenge move plain and simple his bad wife humiliated him emasculated him and shamed him and so he took it out on everyone else Brigham Young is also guilty of sexism, as you can tell, not just with the temple uh, suicide requirement for disobedient wives, but taking away their priesthood given to them on March 17th, 1842. Anniversary is coming up, women. You have priesthood, but you can only exercise it in the temple. Do you not see how you're using it in the temple? You're officiating in the washing and anointings and at the veil. That's a priesthood position. And you have the priesthood. But the church will not let you take it out of the temple so that you can use it in your families, so that you can use it in the Release Society organization. The Release Society was set up to be the woman's administrative organization of the priesthood for women. Emma was the president of the church for women. Other fruits of Brigham Young is that he is a racist. The church admits that in uh, Blacks and the Priesthood, that gospel topic essay. And he took away priesthood from Blacks. Just because the church allowed 
pre or blacks to have the priesthood in 1978. Again, that does not mean that the church is no longer racist. Where are black apostles? Well, apparently, we only have token black men in the 70. I don't recall a, a, a black member of the uh, presidency of the 70. Again, having a token black man does not mean you're not racist. The church also segregates right here in this valley. The church made a group for blacks called the Genesis Group. <coughs> Why couldn't they integrate with the white groups since Utah is dominantly white? Why did we have to segregate them out and have a black ward now after 1978 when finally priesthood leaders could run that organization rather than having outsiders come in to administer the sacrament? And to conduct the meetings. And then of course, Spanish wards are segregated, deaf wards are segregated, Korean wards are segregated, Polynesian wards are segregated, and the poor are segregated. And that's Utah government design. Because new housing, it's only affordable for the rich. Thus the new housing have wards for the rich. Now in some instances there are no other way around it but to build housing uh, in and among the older housing where only the poor can afford the poor housing, the older housing. And so in those cases there is no segregation. But the whole system is set up to segregate the rich from the poor. And so these are the fruits of the church because of Brigham Young. And as Jesus says, you cannot produce good fruit from a corrupt seed, from a corrupt tree. So even though a leader somewhere along this line may desire to do good, that doesn't make the church good. Why? Because a person may actually be good. Well, it's simple, Mormons, and you understand this. Because you refuse to accept who I am. Just like the Nephites refused to accept Samuel the Lamanite. He was not a prophet. How dare he come to their capital and tell them to repent, to tell them that there will be signs in the heavens, warning of destruction, warning to prepare. They tried to murder Samuel the Lamanite, didn't they? Chased him out. Abinadi. He warned the people. Who was he to warn the people? He was a terror threat to the King Noah and his priests. And so when they had him arrested, they called him crazy. Mad is the word. Insane. Mentally ill. Whatever word you use. And hopefully it's not the outdated, now uh, uh, discriminatory slang word of retarded.
Utah had used that word in their law code. Just because somebody is a critic or in opposition to the church does not make them automatically wrong. When you understand the fruits, you understand that critics are in the right and that Oaks, when he talked to the BBC for the documentary, Oaks was in the wrong and he is not automatically right just because of his position and status in the church. No church leader, no church leader, whether local or in the, uh, the prophet groups, First Presidency, Quorum of the Twelve, even the 70s, no one is above the law of God. The 14 fundamentals of a prophet is wrong. It wasn't even by a president of the church. Yes, it was by Benson, but as an apostle, he had no authority to give commandments to the church. Only the president is supposed to, assuming the president has the mantle. And like I said, a president of the church cannot just receive the mantle by being a good person. If Brigham Young did not have the mantle, which I've already demonstrated, he doesn't. That means none of his successors have it. Because where would they get it from? They didn't get it from Joseph Smith. He's dead. Brigham Young didn't get it because Joseph Smith didn't give it to him. He tried to claim 107 in the Doctrine and Covenants as to his justification for it. And yet at the same time, Doctrine and Covenants section 107 doesn't give it to him either because he sort of left out certain scriptures before that scripture that he utilized. So this is a crisis moment, Mormons. This is the test. <clears throat> And even though that came from Heber C. Kimball, who didn't have authority, although in a sense I, he did have authority because it did come from Joseph, but not the, whole, the keys of the priesthood to run the church. And so in that sense, yes, if he was quoting uh, Joseph Smith, testifying of Joseph Smith, then yes, it would be legitimate prophecy that a test is coming to the Mormons in this valley. But that's what Mormons do not get. The keys of authority are gone. And I've been demonstrating that to you because one of those keys is supposed to be decipherment and translation of ancient documents. I see that Mormons are flocking to that scripture that I had done about the church finding documents in Missouri, Adam on Diamon even. That was just to get your attention because of the way that YouTube has set it up. It was titled specifically in accordance with what I was hoping would be your typing, your searching on YouTube. So that YouTube would then say, hey, we're recommending this. Or if you type it in, any of those words, that it would show up in the listing for you to select. And am I wrong? Are there records found? Yes, there are records found. I've done that video too. I tried it through a different approach and it worked for a little bit, but now it's dying. So I'm re bringing it back up <clears throat> through a 
different method through a different titling. The Egyptian records. Remember, the Book of Mormon was Egyptian. The brass plates talked about in the Book of Mormon were Egyptian. The brass plates were the stick of Ju Joseph and the stick of Judah. It had a record of the kings of Judah, and it had a genealogy of the offspring of Joseph. Stick of Joseph, stick of Judah, in one book. Where have you heard that before? Your scripture mastery in Ezekiel 37. Take the stick of Joseph and the stick of Judah and make them one in the latter days. Only Nelson, as I can find, and like I admit, the church's search engine is not very good. Because you can type in uh, keywords to try to find something, but then you'll have 20 pages to uh, search through in order to find what it is you're looking for and they may not have it because you didn't type in the exact word you just typed in a keyword and so you have to go through all of the the listing on all 20 pages it's a horrible thing my scripture program does better So Mormons, you're going to church today. You're going to continue to violate the Lord's anointed. Did you not go through the temple? Did you not get anointed in the temple? I went through the temple. I was anointed in the temple. Thus, I am the Lord's anointed. I have demonstrated the priesthood key of translation, which I'm not supposed to have, but I have it. I've demonstrated it. I've done the first page. I've done several other scenes. I know how the rest of the text goes with the match to Egyptian documents. I've showed you the primer to decipher, the key to decipherment. Ra, the sun god. He's in China. He's in Paleo-Hebrew. He's in Egyptian. That's the key to translation. Yes, I've had dreams where President Hinckley gave me the key to his office. Now, he was dead, and no, he did not appear as a spirit in my dreams. That's not how dreams work. The spirit of President Hinckley did not possess my body and tell me in my dreams. Now, dreams were symbolic. They're given from God. And so, yes, I was given the key to the kingdom in that dream. But Hinckley didn't have the key to give. But in the dream, at that time, I thought he did. And so the symbolism was manifested as Hinckley given it to me. And he had just died. This was 2008. And sure enough, I've manifested the fruits of having that key. I didn't think I was ever going to utilize it. I was incarcerated, intended for the rest of my life, 
without being found guilty in a trial. There was no trial. They weren't going to let me go to trial. It was the government of Utah ordered by the church to remove me from society and have me murdered. In 2015, I had a kidney infection due to the side effects of what was inflicted upon me, the torture, the abuse. The receptionist secretary from the hospital gave me an emergency phone call when they finally got the test results back, saying that they gave me the wrong antibiotic and was scared for my life. I was able to calm her down because I, as a Boy Scout, learn first aid and as a firefighter learn first aid and so I was able to care for myself to make sure that my brain didn't turn to mush and that I became a vegetable which would have happened had I not known what to do These corrupt cowards are trying to murder me. And who am I? I'm no one of significance. I am now only because of the books. Paleo Hebrew is my number one seller. And so people around the world know of me because they've bought my book. And my books are available for free on my website, but nobody's taking advantage of that. They'd rather buy a printed copy or a Kindle version that I finally think I figured out how to get it to work by using pictures rather than text, because Kindle doesn't recognize text, not ancient fonts. It converts them into uh, the regular font, which is all numbers and letters. And so, yeah, that would, I've had to try to figure that out. I'm not technologically smart. And Amazon is not fully cooperative on instructing me on how to uh, uh, publish ancient languages. And so as a result of having to put pictures in, in place of text, that requires a lot of extra work on my part. And so the process is slow. But I had obtained or finished the Paleo Hebrew work. I haven't gotten to the vocabulary yet. Uh, the vocabulary tests that I had done previously, uh, I no longer have access to the fonts used on that text. And so the fonts that are now in it that I've published are wrong. And I put a key uh, to help a person know the correction needed. And so that's frustrating because I now have to go through the whole thing and replace each and every single letter. And it's a thick book. And I have several volumes of these thick books. It took me a lot of time to do that in the beginning. And by being denied that font, that screwed up the whole work. It's now encoded. <laughs> and that's why I put the key to decipherment in the beginning of the publications. It is my goal and intention, as I keep saying, to rescue Mormons, bring them out of the church. 
I wasn't born and raised Catholic. I wasn't born and raised Jewish. I wasn't born and raised Christian of any of the various sects of Christianity. I wasn't born Hindu, Buddhist, Islamic. I was born and raised Mormon. And so it's clear that YouTube gets better attention when I do videos about Mormonism, even if it's critical of the Mormon church, especially if it's critical. Because for some reason, uh, uh, those shocking titles are what attracts people. I thought it was uh, Bishop Sex Abuse, but that's died. <laughs> It's no longer an issue in the headlines anymore, so nobody's looking it up. And it's possible and likely that my sacrament video will kick up again. Because today's Sunday. You see, I know Mormons. I know that you have been blinded by the leaders. I was. And I've talked about it. I've talked about how Mormons who finally realize that the church isn't true and they leave, there's still baggage that they take with them. And Mormons say, oh, that's, that's the guilt you feel for having left us. You'll come back. We'll get you. You can't go back, not once you've learned the truth. Because if you go back, you betray the truth. And yet I've seen people go back and betray the truth. And the only reason why is because they've got nowhere else to go. If the church isn't true, they don't see any other churches being true either. And again, like with the Mormon church, if the Mormon church does not have the authority from God, the mantle from God, the keys of the kingdom from God, neither does any of Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism. Because remember, Jesus was a rebel. He went against his church, his Jewish church. He called the Pharisees fools, blind guides, hypocrites. He was in constant conflict with the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes. Jesus was a rebel, a rogue, violating the hedge laws of the Jewish church. It's like today, a member of the church of Jesus Christ drinking Mountain Dew, not wearing his garments, not worried about a Sunday Sabbath observance. Because as I've told you guys in a video also in other places, Pope Gregory established the calendar system for Sunday being at the first day of the week, which was already had in Constantine's time, who was the one who usurped the church. He had no authority. He was an emperor of Rome, and he stepped in took over the church. It's exactly what Brigham Young did, Christians. And so if Brigham Young had no authority to succeed Joseph Smith, guess what? Neither did Constantine. So Christianity is faced with the same condition that Mormons are in.
and you can't argue me on this. It's all throughout the history books. You can't just call it fake news, because where do you stand now? Who do you claim for authority then, if you claim that Constantine's authority is fake news? The Mormons, I've already demonstrated, Brigham Young does not have fruits of any priesthood key. There are no revelations. Denying blacks the priesthood is not a revelation. But that's how the current leaders see it. They don't talk about Brigham Young, though. They talk about their own actions as revelation. But where do they get their authority? Where do they get the mantle? Where do they get the priesthood keys to claim revelation, to act on behalf of the whole church, to claim that God himself is ordering it? <coughs> because we just go back to Brigham Young again. Did God want Brigham Young to be a racist? to be a sexist, to be a murderer, to be a polygamist, to change who Heavenly Father is? That's what Constantine did. He changed the nature and character of God, just as Brigham Young changed the nature and character of God. You just don't do that. God is who he is. And now women would rise up and say, no, it's a she. <laughs> There's a heavenly mother and a heavenly father, but heavenly mother has been suppressed. The whole original religion has been destroyed. A restitution is needed. You need to find someone who has the fruits of the keys of the kingdom. And if you can't figure it out by now, I can't help you. And the person obviously can't just tell you he has them or show you his fruit because that's not enough for you, is it? <laughs> Fake fruit. I believe the prophets. Nothing I can do for a person who's that hard-hearted. Okay, now I need to discuss what happened with Mansan 900 yesterday, last night. He was pulling a, what I call a Stephen, because there was a guy named Stephen who had been coming to my site and commenting about his ideology on my channel. And it was off topic from the video. He was wanting to use my channel's comment section to do his own video presentations, so to speak, his own blogs. If he has access to the internet, he can get a free website channel and blog all he wants. <clears throat> if he is able to communicate on YouTube, he has to have a YouTube channel. He then can vlog all he wants on his channel. And so I tolerated him in, in the beginning but then it got excessive. And 
I had to warn him. Please use your channel to present your ideas. Otherwise, stay on topic with the video. And I had to ban him because he didn't want to comply. And so when Mansan 900 came around, he was doing the same thing. Not as extreme as Steven, but he was still doing it. And it was irrelevant sentences, irrelevant comments. It was his own agenda that he was using my channel in the comment form to blog his own information. And so again, I kept warning him. And he, I, he was aware of the warning because he had been commenting on those channel of those videos as well. And yet he wasn't as extreme, but he was continuing it. And so he had been warned. And then last night, as uh, I was again giving him warning, he then talked about we need to, I uh, uh, can't remember the word, uh, but it had to do with stop the church or attack the church. Uh, I can't, like I said, I can't remember the, the exact word. It wasn't stop or attack. But it was clear uh, that he wanted to do something to stop the church. And he was incorporating we. He was trying to drag me into it. This is my channel. I will do my method. I'm not going to follow you. And so that concerned me when he said we. Because uh, I was like, what are you trying to drag me into? And then I found other comments that I didn't see in my Gmail. And those comments were of severe hatred towards Islam, which again are off topic, but nevertheless was wanting abuse and violence towards Islam. It was uncalled for. It's not brought up in my videos. So where is he getting this from? Why is he putting it on my channel? And so I had to report that. And then the other one also was a re-informing of abuse and hatred of extreme measures against the church, clarifying the previous comment that he tried to incorporate, we needed to act. And so I saw these uh, comments that were hidden from my Gmail as a call for a militant action to be taken against not just the church, but against Islam. And I had to report it. I wear contacts and so it results in the film residue. I have never called for a militant uprising never I have warned that because we've allowed our nation to be taken over by a king that we will end up having to give our lives if we are to save the Constitution 
That's what I was willing to do back in 2008. I refused to be silenced. I refused to be suppressed by a government who refused to help me get my children back, who were wrongfully taken away from me, and the church were involved in that taking away process. Nobody wanted to take the case. Nobody wanted to help me. Nobody wanted to allow me to win in a court battle. And then they turned to attack me, to punish me through the, the violation of my rights. And so I stood up and gave them a petition for a redress of grievances in the form of a book. And yes, they pulled a King Noah on me. They had me removed from society, thrown in the Salt Lake County Jail, as a terrorist, just like Abinadi. And, just like Abinadi, they called me mad. And in the discovery, which I still have, their intention was clear. They weren't taking me to court. They weren't taking me to trial. They were abusing the legal system, the court system even, <coughs> by falsely accusing me of being a terrorist. And yes, they set it all up. They got my parents to say, oh, Travis is a violent man who uses violence to solve his problems. I've never been in a fight. Ever. I have never used violence to solve my problems. My parents lied. And if we were to take them, take the case to court in a trial with my parents on the witness stand, and they're going to continue to maintain, yes, Travis uses violence to settle his problems. All my lawyer has to do is ask, give us an example of when a time was that Travis used violence to settle a situation. They'd have to make it all up. And they won't have any documents or corroborating evidence or recordings or anything to justify it. But I've got it for my dad. I've got it for my mom. They were violent to me to resolve their concerns. And thus they were projecting on me. Because they just assumed I'm sure Travis somewhere, someone was violently abused by him. No. I have been a man of peace my whole life. Even though in high school, when my brother was being picked on, and my sister came to me and said, Todd is being picked on at school. They're stealing his lunch. They're uh, knocking out his books so that he has to pick them up. Uh, he's being picked on and abused. And so uh, my sister and I went into where his locker was and we sat at the benches and we waited to find out who was doing this. My brother was never bothered again. They never showed to the locker. Word got out and it was stopped at least until I graduated. <laughs> Everybody fears me, but I don't know why. I'm tall, yes. I'm strong, used to be. <laughs> yes, I mean, I had the famous uh, basketball incident uh, where uh, I had the ball and uh, the other player jumped on my back in the middle of the game. He was running, landed on my back. Everybody went, <gasps> even the coach came to me saying, are you okay, are you okay? I was still standing. He flew right off. 
and so I was I was designated as the mule Peter was the ox <laughs> sometimes I was the ox as Peter and I were both the ox uh, but uh, I got the nickname of the mule <laughs> uh, and uh, other times Peter and I were the twin towers But yeah, I, there was also an incident where I was practicing a roundhouse kick. I was sure that I missed. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I didn't. I didn't think I'd connected, but I did. Uh, and uh, I wasn't targeting the guy. We weren't having a kickboxing competition, as Titus was in uh, kickboxing. But, uh, yeah, I learned at a young age that my strength uh, hurts people just shaking a hand. And so I don't get aggressive with handshaking. And I've learned to hold back my strength. And that's made me weak, obviously. But uh, as a kid, uh, people would try to hurt me uh, with the uh, mercy hand game, where you lock hands and you try to bend the other person to the point where they declare mercy because they're in so much pain. It's like arm wrestling, only with the hand wrists, or fingers, I guess. And so I had learned, oh, okay. Uh, they're using their right hand on my left hand. <coughs> so all I have to do is flex or lo loosen up my left hand and let them think that they're winning and then crush them with my right hand. <laughs> and that's how I was able to do it. They were distracted by thinking they had me, but they didn't. There was no pain. I was able to bend them and, and all that. I used to be able to, well, anyway. Uh, but uh, yeah, once they thought they had me, then all of a sudden I then apply and slowly and until they finally went, ah, uncle. You know, those were games. Those were playing around. Those weren't fights. When my dad struck me in the stomach, he thought that uh, I would be uh, weak. And that striking me would demonstrate to me that I needed to get off the couch, stop watching TV, and go do some real work. Much to his displeasure and shock and horror, I had abs of steel. So when he punched me, it hurt him. As a volleyball player, I was demonstrating my toughness with spiking. The high school banned volleyball during PE and then we complained and so they said okay no more spiking then <laughs> it's like basketball you can only slam the basketball during a game <laughs> you can't do it during practice or warm-ups but yeah, we were told we can't slam the bat of the volleyball, spike the volleyball. Why? Because the uh, the student on the receiving end of my spike had Spalding branded on his belly. Literally, you could see Spalding on his belly as he showed everyone. 
and so will the PE teacher. No more spiking. <laughs> oh. Okay. It was bad enough they didn't have a men's volleyball team in our high school, but they had a women's volleyball team. And California had recently passed a law saying that if a school does not have a one sex team, but they have the other sex's team, that those of the other sex can apply or try out for the other sex's team. Utah has had that experience with football. Uh, or wrestling, I guess. There are schools here in Utah that didn't have a re women's wrestling, and there were women who wanted to wrestle. And so they tried out for the men's wrestling team, and the school banned them and denied them, and so they had to take it to court. And thus it caused news, <laughs> and thus the school had to comply by either forming a women's team or allowing them to try out for the men's team. We are faced with a crisis in this nation where our leaders in government, in business, and in religion are abusing the people, severely abusing the people. People are dying. People are starving. People are being denied their rights to life, liberty, and property. And nobody wants to stop it. Nobody wants to change. And when we the people rise up and demand our civil rights, they suppress us now. The civil rights movement shocked the government. And they don't want that to ever happen again. They want to continue to do wicked. But they don't want an uprising. And so now it's illegal. Now the National Guard will be called in. There will not be a civil unrest when the government is corrupt. They are protecting themselves against the people. And I don't understand why Sandy didn't revolt when they got lead poisoned. I don't know if Sandy realizes how serious the lead poisoning in their bodies now is. You can't get rid of it, guys. Your body is polluted for life. And women, your children, will carry it with them too for three generations. I don't understand why you just rolled over. It wasn't an accident. It was the person's job to protect you and warn you. And he failed in his one and only job. And so yes, the government keeps baiting us, provoking us to fight so that they can suppress us, so that they can justify abusing us. And so yes, it is inevitable that there will be a civil war on this land. But we must not draw first blood. We must not go after those who are innocent, who are blinded. The leaders are responsible. And if you saw the movie The Patriot with Mel Gibson, uh, they violated the, the uh, 
protocol of war. They were targeting the leaders in the British Army. Because the British Army thought, oh, well, we'll just send our men, our soldiers, and uh, we'll outsmart them through these tactics. And they won't ever touch us. We're the leaders. You, it's not proper to uh, go after the leaders. And so, yeah, the Americans went after the leaders, knowing full well that when you don't have leaders, the people don't know what to do. And uh, that's how we won in the Revolutionary War. And that's what we need to do now, is go after the leaders. And it's working. The Me Too movement has taken out leaders for sexual assault. And we're calling out racists now. All forms of corruption are being exposed. <coughs> Those who are committing business fraud and corruption. Those who are tax evaders. The white collar crimes are now being punished for the first time in our history. This is the Civil War. And so far we haven't had to go to bloodshed. So far, the mobilization of a counterattack against our abusers is working. The church with the Protect LDS Children movement finally worked. Whereas ordained women suffered a major setback with the excommunication of their leader. The NAACP keeps trying, but in vain. But LDS children got the church to change. And women, despite having their leader excommunicated, are getting something. But again, the church does not have authority. They do not have the mantle. And so we need to keep pressuring them. The information I'm providing in my videos is more than enough to go up against the church, to petition the church to step down, to stop the abuse. What they did in the midterms was unacceptable. What they did in California was unacceptable. What they did in Colorado was unacceptable. What they're trying to do throughout this nation is unacceptable. They need to be stopped, but we don't need to go militant. Not yet. Militant is a defense. Right now, we can still rise up with our voices. When they come at us, and physically threaten our lives, then we can rise up and defend us. But they're in a position of power and they know that. That's why they're not doing it and they're doing other things to torture us. Withhold substance from the poor and the needy, for example. Segregation, for example. Denying the priesthood to get into the highest degree of the celestial kingdom for example, denying women the use of the priesthood outside of the temple, for example. Those are abuses of leadership. But until Mormons recognize it as abuse, and until Mormons stand up and say, hey, stop, give us what is ours, Give us our rights to life, liberty, and property. Then 
give us what God wants to give us. If Mormons will not stand up as a whole, not on an issue, but for the whole of the church, because we have all these different groups all fighting for their freedoms in the one area. The women, ordained women, blacks, protect LDS children. They're all focused on one item, trying to get the church to change on that one thing. When the church needs to restore the whole thing altogether, and they don't have the authority and the keys to do that. That's why they won't do it. That's why they're just tolerating people who attack them with counterattack. That's why they change the priesthood or the temple to hope that people will silence, be silenced, and leave them alone. Let them wear slacks. Let them eat cake. So, uh, this video has already gone too long. But this is an important video. I hope you're still listening. I have those who are faithful listeners. But I need everyone. You have no problem sitting in a two-hour session of conference. But you can't last an hour when we're in crisis mode. So I'm going to try to title this video in a manner which I hope will draw your attention. There are videos that are being neglected that need to be heard. I just didn't title them right, I guess. We'll see what I can do for the title here.